Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and I'm going to show you a tutorial today on be able to fade, change, and adjust UIs in runtime with script in Unity. And if everybody could throw a like on this video, that would be absolutely awesome. So what I've got here is I've just got my menu from my menu tutorial, which I've got on YouTube, which you can check out, and you can also get the full project on my Patreon. You can see normally with UIs, you can just turn them on and off the set active component in unity which which is great in some instances but sometimes you want to fade it or be able to control being able to fade it slightly in runtime or across different elements so let me give you an example this can be on anything element wise it can be on a panel which has multiple bunches of object but let's say we've got the main canvas here we can add something called a canvas group and when we've got our canvas group you can still see our main canvas here which is my menu but with it added you can see there's an alpha option between one and zero now if we scroll down all the way to zero you can see that we actually cut off the actual look of the menu and if we take it back up to one, you can see it fades in between. And I'm going to show you how to control this in script so you can create a little fade in, fade out buttons or little events which can make that happen. Open up a Visual Studio. Now at the top, you want to use a namespace because we want to access a UI element. So we're going to using Unity Engine dot ui and we can get rid of the starting methods. And what we want to do is we want to just reference by square bracket serialize field, we want to create a variable which is private and we want to use it a canvas group. So we reference the canvas group and we can call this my UI group or something like that. And the, then the way that we can control what they should do, let's say is that we create some methods that would be able to be used on a button. So we'll say public void show UI. And then I'm going to have another which is just going to be the opposite version, which is hide UI. So then we're going to say that my UI group dot alpha is equal to one. So that will set it straight to one. And my UI group dot alpha is equal to zero. So in these cases, our buttons will show it and hide it. I'll give you the quick example and then we'll do the fading after this. Once we're back in Unity, we can create an empty game object by right clicking create empty. And we can create a fade script empty game object or something that will hold our script, we'll add our script. It's looking for a canvas group, so we can specify as menu. So then on our two buttons that we've got, which are separate to the menu canvas, I'm just going to in my fade in, I'm just going to add the fade script game object. Then I'm going to go to the fade script and I'm going to choose show UI. Then I'm going to do the fade out, add that script again, as long as it's got an event and go to the fade script and do hide UI. Now when we press play, you can see fade out, fade in, which is just like being able to turn UI elements on or off. But in this case, it's fade, it's turning the alpha from one to zero. That's fine like that. But now we want to say that how do we possibly fade those in? Okay, so now we can just create something at the top. So we'll create a square bracket serialized field. I'm going to have private bool. And I'm going to have this as fade in set that equal to false. And I'm going to have another square bracket serialized field, say private ball fade out, set that equal to false. So now when I click that button, I want to say fade in to show the UI should be true. Or if I press the hide UI, I'll say that fade out should be true. Now we're going to create a update method. So we'll say void update. And we'll say that if fade in is true at any point, then we can say that if my UI group dot alpha is ever less than one, and then it means if the alpha is any less than its full value, we're going to be able to fade it up. So we'll say that my UI group dot alpha plus equals time dot delta time with a semicolon. And then we also need to be able to check that if my UI group dot alpha is ever greater than or equal to one. So that will be its maximum that it could ever be. Then we can say that fade in equals false. So we don't need to be able to check this anymore. We can do something really, really similar. So we'll just copy what we had here. And we are just going to copy that entire section. And we're just going to write under here. We're going to say in this time, we'll add fade out. So if fade out equals true, we need to make sure that if our alpha is ever greater than or equal to zero, then we know that it is above its current amount. Then we can say that my UI group dot alpha 
minus equals time dot delta time. And then in this case, if our alpha in the group ever equals, ever equals equals zero, so if, we, if it's set to zero, we just want to say that fade out equals false. So now we can do pretty much the same thing. We can go back into Unity, make sure our fade game object has our fade script. We've got two things, whether it's fade in, fade out, and we've specified our canvas group. Make sure that they're still on your buttons that you've added the game object and linked to show UI and hide UI. Now we can press play and you can see that it's on by default. We can press fade out and you can see it fades over time. And you can also say fade in over time. Add the fade script to your button and then you can specify what specific canvas it might be. So you can do it like so, then add itself to it, which is just this actual button itself. And you can do the same thing with a fade script and choose to either show or hide. So you can do fade in. So then you can control it on each button rather than it being on a game object over here, unless you had lots of different variables, which had lots of different canvas groups that you wanted to turn on and off, but you can control it on a per button basis and it still does the same thing. So we can do fade out, we can also do fade in. So this could be something that you activate at any particular point when you press a button, you want to fade another UI element in. So hopefully this helped you out. I will put this script on my Patreon so you can get access to it to be able to control different UI elements. So be sure to come and join the Patreon if you want scripts entire projects and premium assets that you can't find anywhere else. Come and join my Discord if you want to chat. Check out my great assets on the Unity Asset Store. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.